All right. Closer to the, I'm short. That's okay. Is that okay? Closer. Closer to the microphone. Thank you. Okay. I don't know if I can stand like this <laughs> for long. Well, first, thank you all for coming to an inaugural event. Um, this invent, event was invented in my head, in my team's head, probably about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And we kept turning it around and trying to figure out if we can make it work and with uh, a lot of help, uh, particularly from my home club, the Twin Bridges Rotary Club, uh, we have just about a sold out night with a lot of partner organizations and um, kind of like anything else in life, when you see, you have a vision in your head and you actually see it become a reality, it just um, it really makes your heart swell. So thank you. So a little bit about why we're here, you know, um, I'm going to open up with a story and if my kids were here they'd kill me because um, they would be really embarrassed by this, but it, it kind of spoke to the point that I wanted to make so I'm using it. Uh, a couple of months ago my girls had gone over to visit my mom and she was quite ill at the time and um, she was having a difficult time moving around and uh, she really couldn't take good care of herself so during their visit my mom asked my daughter to clip her toenails. <laughs> now, my teenager, being a typical teenager, was completely grossed out by the concept. And I'm getting text messages. They're going, eh, I don't want to do this, ew. So after a lot of bantering about, I asked her to think of it as an act of love. And she wrote me back. And first she said, well, can I pick a different act of love? <laughs> No, this is the one that you know she needs help with, and um, and with that she stopped being grossed out and, and helped my mother. So does that make my teenager a hero? Well, you know what? In in my eyes, it sure does. Uh, she did something for another person that they could not do for themselves, and it's those little moments that makes the work that each of you do heroes as well. Heroes don't wear capes, they're not Spider-Man, they're not Superman, and I don't know about you, but I won't be jumping off any tall buildings in a single bound anytime soon. Um, but heroes get up every day, they hit the shower, they put their pants on one leg at a time, or a sparkly dress, they grab breakfast and they go to work. And some of our heroes get paid to work with charities and non-for-profits and some of them do the hero work after their regular working hours. But they, you, are all very ordinary people doing an extraordinary job. And you commit acts of love every day of your life. And just in case someone may have forgotten to say thank you, may I, on behalf of every life that you've touched, every part that you've preserved, every child that you've made smile, say thank you now. So thank you. Tonight is very different for a lot of reasons. It's the first time that I can think of that I've had the opportunity to see various organizations together under one roof to simply appreciate each other's service. And for me, it's an opportunity to meet new organizations for our collective Rotary Clubs to partner with or to just simply learn more about. In business, we talk a lot about competition. And I suppose if you really look at it technically, we are competitors for at least the same resources, time, money, and manpower. But let me present to you an alternative. What about collaboration? What about cooperation? I personally have no desire to reinvent the wheel. 
What I do have a desire to accomplish is to expand our reach and our impact. I think that the best way that we can do that is by helping each of your organizations to expand your reach and your impact. Each of you serve a specific portion of the population. Our 1,300 local Rotarians and our 41 clubs can help you serve that population. Maybe they can help you expand your services or the way you serve or even who you serve. Rotary's greatest successes have always been through partner, partnering with other organizations. We are this close to eradicating polio across the globe. And while we are the ones on the ground, so to speak, we would not have been able to come as far as we have without the World Health Organization or UNICEF or the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let me give you an example that's a little closer to home. A number of years ago, uh, a member of our club, so I need, in a little village in Africa. She wanted to rebuild a school there that educated about 600 kids. To make it happen, our partner, our club, partnered with the Shenandoah Club, and then with the Lathan Club, and then with several other clubs within the district. And then we reached out all the way across the globe and we partnered with the Victoria Falls Club in Zimbabwe. They gathered up other partners, carpenters, suppliers, and that's what allowed us to be able to build 600 desks and benches and pour cement and actually physically go to a little village in Zimbabwe and paint blackboards and deliver so much needed supplies for the village. And to me, that's the magic of Rotary. The ability to reach out anywhere in the world to pull together resources to make the world a better place. And if other organizations need to reach out to us so that they, they can have more resources, well then, I say we do it. No man is an island. No organization can succeed solely on its own. So give it some thought. My thanks to you for attending tonight. My thanks to you for all the service that you do and for being a hero, making our world a better place. And my personal thanks to you for giving me the opportunity to learn more about each of you and what you do because you are the real heroes. So thank you.